This video along with my trip to Earth 2022 was made possible by Waleswares.com, your one-stop shop for all-inclusive 3D printed paint kits to printing on demand. Whatever it is you're looking for that relates to 3D printing, there is definitely something for everyone. So make sure you check them out. Links in the video description below. We're back here at Earth 2022, and next to me I have Stephen Hawkins. I was so expecting you to say Hawkins. <laughs> so, that was so good. I was, I was, I was just. I get that a lot sometimes. <laughs> They're like Stephen Hawkins. Yeah. No, no. So you are the owner of the company Opulo, yes. correct? Yes, I'm the owner and founder of Opulo. Um, we're also the company that runs the open source project, the Lumen PNP. Um, but yeah, this is this is our, our first foray. So this is a, essentially it's a pick in place. The reason why this caught my attention is because I am currently working on a super top secret project. <laughs> um, and this is very interesting. So let's, let's talk about how did this come about? How, which iteration is this? And is it open source? So tell us the story. Sure. So it's very much open source. It runs Marlin. The computer software that actually controls the machine is called OpenPMP, which is also totally open source. All of the design files are not only open, but they're all made in open source CAD, so FreeCAD and KiCAD for the whole thing. It started in uh, 2019. I did a little Kickstarter for a light up bow tie. And I only sold about 100 of them, but I had to solder 3,000 components by hand. And if I and it was horrible. And I tried to get them contracted out to get them manufactured at a place. It was so expensive, I would have lost all the money I made from the Kickstarter. And I realized I really wanted a pick and place machine to assemble all the little chips onto the board for me automatically. But they were like 50 grand, 20 grand. So I decided I wanted to try and make one that could just do it for me that didn't cost an arm and a leg. Um, it really is meant for, are you making between 500 and 5,000 boards a year? 5,000 and up, you're hiring a contract manufacturer to do it. 500 and under, you can do it in your pajamas on the weekends. But if you're trying to get a hardware product out the door or you're a job shop that has like some quick turn boards or you sell boards on Tindy, I wanted to make something that would fill that gap between prototyping and mass production. So I started working on it in early 2020 um, and have been constantly refining it and tuning it since. In February, we started selling machines. Um, and you can buy one now. We're trying to crush our very long backlog of orders, uh, but we're, we're catching up to it now. Um, so you can pick one up right now if you want, or you can build one yourself because uh, it's all open. It's very similar in terms of like additive recently has taken a very large yeah. technology and brought it to the desktop. I'm, I'm very additive as well. <laughs> <laughs> and this does a similar thing, but with FDM or any kind of uh, you know 3D printing that we're doing now, uh, it's a lot more accessible. It's really for prototyping, and you can bring it into production. This is really meant for manufacturing, so it's not quite for. You can set it up to like do iterations of prototypes. A lot of the people that have bought this or built one do it for like they'll make ten of a certain version, and then they get a new version and they can populate it really quick. But it's meant for making a lot of things. Um, so it is making that expensive, larger technology cheaper. Uh, but it's less for prototyping, it's more of making a lot of them. Um, but it has the price point of a 3D printer. And what, what electronics, what, what's the board that, that it uses? Um, it's a totally custom board. For pick and places, there's a couple things that a normal 3D printer board won't have. Each of the lines, it uses a vacuum pump to pick up all the parts. Um, and there's actually vacuum sensors on this board built in. And what that does is that makes sure that you can check that a part has actually been picked correctly. If it doesn't pick it correctly, it immediately notifies that and it goes, drops off the part if it's offset or if it didn't pick it at all, and it'll go retry. This is a very specifically made board for pick and place applications. You can buy this separately from our store. And of course, the source is always open so you can make one if you'd like. Um, but this is what drives the whole thing. It really is truly a rep wrap because we use the machine to make its own controller. At our office in Pittsburgh, we have a bunch of these things all lined up and they're just cranking out controllers all day, making a whole bunch of them. So I, I also saw that belt, um, I don't know, I, I was like a belt feeder? Like uh, component yeah. feeder? Yeah. So that's, I'm guessing that is also developed in house as well? Yes, yeah, we've also developed a feeder. So when you have the nozzle and it goes and picks the parts, you need to have some way to serve those parts up to the nozzle so it can keep placing them onto the boards. Right now we just have some parts pulled through on a strip 
and that works fine. It, it's what we use to make all of the boards at our at our office. But this is a little robot that automatically goes and moves the tape forward a very precise amount, peels the film off, and serves it up to the nozzle, so it's even less automated. You you don't have to do even less to keep this thing running and making your boards. Um, this is our uh, Rev 7 iteration. We're doing a beta with some existing customers a little bit in a few weeks, um, and we're shooting to ship these by the end of the year. And will this only work with your board? Or once again, the question is, if I run Tool Changer, maybe, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I would, I, working on right would, would I be able to attach this and have it work with the Tool Changer? Very likely. It's all based on, um, it's talking RS-485. Um, it's, so if you have a UART, a port on whatever board that you're trying to connect it to and you slap a transceiver on there, it's not too hard to get it to talk. It's pretty open. The protocol we developed specifically for feeders is an open protocol that we're trying to have anyone else that wants to design their own feeder type can use the protocol and very similar to how Marlin works for a whole bunch of different boards, we want to do the same thing for the code for this. So it's very adaptable. And I see everything is like 2020 extrusions, um, wheels, stepper motors, like it's, it, everything is very available. Yes, and that was really important to us when we were designing it. We want to make sure that there's nothing in here that is unobtainium. You should be able to source this. We'd like you to buy one from us because it helps continue to support the project, but if you don't have the budget to buy it, if you're just trying to get your product out the door, you should be able to get the parts for this. They can't be hard to get, so that's been a really important thing for us as we've been going through. And what's the price point for like a full complete system as it is here? You can buy a machine for $1,750, um, and it comes in four or five parts that bolt together in 20 minutes. Um, and within an hour, you're placing a board. So we actually, uh, we got some feedback from our users in early machines that we shipped to that, you know, like with a 3D printer, you print a Benchy, and that's like how you test a printer. We made the Benchy of PCBs. So you put the board on there, and it walks you through our documentation sites, like, this is how you get everything set up. Do you see an offset here? This is how you tweak it. So by the time you're done with that hour of setup, you are ready to rock. You can put your board in, and you're making boards. A question, because you, you've showed me the process of it as it starts out. It goes to the camera, it calibrates, goes to pick the part, yeah. goes back to the camera, makes sure it picks it properly, places it on the board, and then goes back and all that. And after that, you put it in the oven yes. to sort of heat up. Mm -hmm. Is there plans to have the base as a heater where it automatically does all that? What I'll say is this. That's my mom's toaster oven that we use. And she wants it back. And <laughs> she told me, Stephen, you can't use it. You have to use it for food. And I was like, OK, yeah, we're going to That puts food on the table. <laughs> it does. It still counts. It's not a great solution. You can modify a toaster oven to be a reflow oven. You have to follow a very specific temperature curve to follow like what the solder paste recommends. There isn't a great solution out there. So we're, we're looking to see what, what can we do to make that better? And we're exploring all the options. Another question is, could you have, because this has two pick and place thingamabobs. Yes. It's, it's very important to distinguish between very thing, technical thingamabob and thingamajig. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So this is a thingamajig, yeah. and those are thingamabobs. <laughs> could you have one thingamabob yes. <laughs> that actually places the, uh, the solder and the other one to place the parts? The parts. That's a great question, and I've tried that before. Um, I did a whole bunch of experimentation trying to dispense paste. The shorter answer is it's possible. Um, and it can work really well, but it's very finicky. And stencils, which is usually how you get the paste onto a board, is an industry standard for a reason. It's very inexpensive to make. It's incredibly precise. And it's not really the bottleneck in this process. It's not the thing that needs to be automated. We could do it. I have. It does work. It's not the thing that needs to be tuned. And I really don't want this thing to become a Swiss Army knife, where it's, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. It needs to place parts, and it needs to do it well. So we're staying away from paste is the current thought um, on the head and making stenciling a really, really good solve. Th that's kind of how we're looking at laying it out. But it is super possible and we've done it before. But then again, you know, that's why minions exist. So you can get them to do stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much. It was an absolute pleasure. Um, where can people, people find more information about the machine? You can find out all about us on opulo.io. Um, the GitHub is there. We have a community of about 3,000 people in our Discord. You can find the source for the whole machine. You can pick one up if you want to get one. I make a whole bunch of YouTube videos about building it, so you can find all that stuff there. And yeah, opulo.io is where you can find everything about it. Brilliant. So links in the video description. Make sure you go check them out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.